Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Hey all, another video request, and this is a Clary test. We're doing a Clary test, but we're doing three in one. And, the re and he brings up a great point, I agree with him 100%. <clears throat> hey asshole, you've, uh, you've had a few requests recently to administer the Clary test on leftist leaning pink fluffy bunny studies at hearing pajama boy socialist communist pinkos. Now I'm going to behoove upon you to do what you claim you're really good at. That is, be open-minded enough and intellectually honest enough to perform an unbiased Clary test on a few of the leading Republican politicians that hold or have held significant positions of power over the past few decades. You've explained in a video after a video how important it is to vote for right-wing Republicans and avoid touchy-feely liberal pinkles because these lazy leftist politicians largely avoid real work and live off of their parents' connections. But if you look at most of these leading Republican backgrounds, they are largely spoiled and sufferable man-children as well that largely relied on their connections and hid out in government for much of their adult lives. So why should we trust them in any positions of power more than any pink fluffy bunny liberal? Because they actually vote the right way. I've never, I'll, let me clarify, I've never said um, this is something that determines the way I vote. It's a way that I judge uh, a person in a character of caliber. And it is also to point out to the left the irony and hypocrisy. Because the Republicans, remember, Republicans are all rich, evil, connected Republican white men anyway. So this is like no duh. It's to point out to the left that, hey, you guys got the exact same people. Uh, but what ultimately boils down to is reconcile the question you're saying, well, how can you adv advocate these guys? Because they're going to vote the way I want. And even then, that's not really what happened. These end, you know, look at George W. Bush Jr. Um, he ended up, until Obama, becoming one of the biggest spending presidents. I think it's LBJ. Yeah, it was. I did a study on it. So you get these rhino Republicans, and that's why you have the rise of the Tea Party. So it, the, the original intention of this was to show it. And if you want, look at a video I put together called Crusaderism. I think it's a seven-piece series because I didn't have the unlimited time recording. But yeah, I actually point out that it's not just uh, left-wing left politicians uh, that have this, but I also point out that it's uh, right-leaning ones as well. Uh, then you go, so you, you, we have President George W. Book, uh, Bush, <clears throat> private sector experience, his daddy bought him a baseball team. You're 100% right on Bush. Bush is just like Trudeau, but here's a perfect juxta juxtaposition. All these leftist fucking socialist retards have just elected George Bush Jr. of the Canadian variety. They took the former son of a, um, of a, their case, premier and our, our case president, and they, they elected this elitist, connected piece of shit scum. And uh, Bush Jr. is kind of the same thing. Now, you know, we can do technicalities. Well, you know, technically the Texas Rangers is a private sector. And it's like, yeah, but you're the son of a fucking president. And then you lived off of your daddy's connections. And he did a stint in the um, National Guard. And that's one of the caveats I provide in the Clary test. Like, if you're in the military, that still does count. But we're going to start shaving off points. So if, if we're going to do an abbreviated score, I'm not going to go through the full analysis of, of GW because I think we all know enough about his background. Yeah, you're looking at like 3.75, a very, very poor score on that. Now, Dick Cheney is the other one you wanted me to do, and as well as uh, uh, Congressman Paul Ryan. But let's, let's go through Wikipedia because uh, Dick Cheney. Let's just go through here. Oh, come on. Because it would surprise you some of these people actually did work. Like, for example, Hillary Clinton did work private law practice for a while. Now, of course, she probably got it because of her father, Mr. Rodham. Um, but this is why I always kind of like to go back, take a look at people's backgrounds. So let's, let's start from scratch. For those of you who don't know, the Clary Test is a series of four questions. Did you grow up under rich parents? Did you major in a stupid, fluffy touchy-feely bunnies things. Do you have any significant private sector experience? Do you current, and fourth one, do you currently work in a non-productive field in the economy? And that includes not only government, but your touchy-feely nonprofit organizations, your NGOs, the theater, the arts, academia, anything subsidized by the government, anything that is subsidized by parents bailing you out uh, or banks bailing you out because you file for bankruptcy. So, except for the military, police, and firefighters. Those get it there. 
Richard Bruce Dick Cheney, 1941, politician and businessman, blah, blah, blah. Born in Lincoln, Nebraska, Cheney was primarily raised in Sumner, Nebraska, in Casper, Wyoming. <clears throat> he attended Yale, then the University of Wyoming, where he earned a BA and an MA in political science. Right off there, worthless fucking degree. Worthless fucking intentions. Now, there is debate that the older generations, you know, any college was good college back then, but I'm saying if you're going into political science, you're, you're right off the bat, you're pretty much a scumbag. So he's already got one full point against him. He began his political career as an intern for Congressman William A. Steger, eventually working his way to the White House during the Nixon and Ford administrations. Sort of chief of staff. All right, so this guy has no private sector experience. None. None. I mean, I know you pointed out, but he immediately went into, just like uh, uh, Corbin, James Corbin over in Scotland. Where was he from? Right off the bat goes into politics. This guy had no intention of ever working a real job. And as you duly pointed out, he was hiding from the draft. Got, what, five deferments or whatever? So that's two right there. Um, this then goes on to uh, his career, which was all public sector, all politician, three. Let's see if he had uh, rich parents. Let's look at the personal life. Born in Lincoln, Nebraska, son of Majorie Lorraine and Richard Herbert Cheney. He is... Uh, Cheney's eighth great grandfather, William Cheney, immigrated to England from Massachusetts. Although not direct descendant, he is collaterally related to Benjamin and Pierce Cheney. Distant cousins of both Harry S. Truman and Barack Obama. Who knew, huh? He attended for Gavin. Convicted of DWI. Well, who is his parents? I know they said all these obscure relatives, but it doesn't tell you, like, who his parents was. Okay, let's... <sighs> Private sector career. Let's click on this. Between 1987 and 1989... Yeah. He, he did, like, a, what, a two-year stint? Okay, yeah. So he's... He has no private sector experience. Um... There's, there's nothing pointing out that he was a rich guy. Oh, here we go. Cheney was a member of the United Methodist Church. His wife was chair of the National Endowment for the Humanities. She's now a public speaker. Mary Employment Baseball Team. You know what? I'm just going to say he probably did come from rich families. Let's just give him a half a point on that. So we're talking 3.5. So once again, you're absolutely right. Uh, this guy's a scumbag. This is somebody that I don't want to be personally hanging out with. Uh, but if given the choice between him and, and he didn't run, Bush gave up his term after that. Like if I had to choose between Dick Cheney and Barack Obama, I'm, too, I'm choosing J uh, Dick Cheney. Let's do Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan. Who's a Wisconsin guy? Kind of like me. <clears throat> Early life and education. Ryan was born in Janesville, Wisconsin. Why do they always go into the, the ancest, ancestry? Irish, German, English? No one cares. One of Ryan's paternal ancestors set it up in Wisconsin. His great grandfather set up a thing. Ryan's grandfather, Stanley M. Ryan, was appointed U.S. Attorney from the District of Wisconsin. Attended St. Mary's Catholic School, so he's coming up from well to do money. Became prom king, student board, second took a job, working the grill at McDonald's. Okay, he was on his Catholic social clubs, model United Nations. Already there's like things like, yeah, he had no intention of... But that reminds grandmother moving has Alzheimer's, Ryan took care of him. Ryan majored in economics and political science. Okay, so two, again, worthless degrees. We got two full points. We became interested in Hayek, Mises, and Friedman, and Rand. Introduced to the National Review, and with Hart's recommendation, Ryan began an internship in the D.C. office of Senator Bob Cast. And all right, right off the bat, career politician, Ryan worked summers. Oh, okay, Ryan worked summers as a salesman at Oscar Mayer, and once got to drive the Wiener No Mobile. During college, Ryan was probably... Da, da, da. Okay, so very little private sector experience. Let's see, do early career. 
urge her son to accept the congressional position, which he did after graduating in 1992. Months. Speech writer for Empower America. Yeah, so this guy has no private sector experience. And boom, four. Let's go all four, huh? Four for four. Ryan is a spoiled little brat, had everything handed, came from rich parents, never worked much in the private sector. So you're right. You're absolutely right. And you know what? I mean, I think by the time you get to Congress, I bet you damn well near 80, 90% of these people have a score of 3.5 or above. Um, but yeah, you are absolutely 100% right. These people are pretty fucking worthless. They just happen to vote the right way. So anyway, you are right. Uh, what was your name? Did we get your name? It's anonymous. Oh, Stephen. You absolutely are right, Stephen. Absolutely 100%. So if we want... <laughs> I always wanted to get my old, uh, my old, um, what's it called, um, producer, radio producer, Joe Dunford. I always wanted him to run for president because, like, he's this normal guy. He works three jobs to support his family. He's just, just an honest guy. That's what you want. But they don't have the money. They don't have the connections. You need to be a rich fucking cunt to run for public office on both parties. So, anyway, thank you very much for the email, Steve. The request, that was a very good one. Toodles.